have to start with the NBA playoffs. One of the two Game 7s, the Brooklyn Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks. This was the marquee matchup Saturday night. What I predicted would be perhaps the best series of this postseason. Now, obviously, we were robbed of some tremendous one-on-one matchups, and these teams were not evenly matched in the sense that both teams were at full capacity, were at full strength. But I will say this, the Game 7 itself delivered an absolutely beautiful performance. The Game 7 itself was an absolutely sensational finish, and fortunately for us as basketball fans, it provided every single ingredient and aspect needed for good game seven. The two best players on the two teams played their best games of the season. They played absolutely fantastically. Giannis, 40 points, 13 rebounds, five assists, 15 of 24 from the floor, two of six from the three-point line. I know that percentagely, that's not a great percentage, but for him, he attempted those shots. He made it. 8 for 14 from the free throw line. Durant on the other end, 48 points was fantastic. Nine rebounds, six assists. The guy had to shoot 36 times, and he made 17 of them. Four of 11 from the three-point line, 10 of 11 from the free throw line. Those two guys were battling down the stretch. This was an absolutely sensational finish, an overtime win for the Milwaukee Bucks to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals with with the victory a couple nights ago. And this is something that I've noted about the Milwaukee Bucks that everyone has noted about the Milwaukee Bucks, the amount of pressure that's been exerted from the outside onto this team that's been heaped onto this team was astronomical. Because the Milwaukee Bucks, while they had everything to gain from winning this perspect- th- this series, they also had everything to lose. You look at the landscape right now in the NBA. In the Western Conference... You had the defending champions, the Lakers, with a injured Anthony Davis and a hobbled LeBron James. They go out in the first round of the Phoenix Suns. Kawhi Leonard now is down for the count with the Clippers for the time being. So the West seems wide open, seems very vulnerable. Chris Paul's in health and safety protocols. We're not sure exactly when what his return timeline is. Then you stay within your own conference. And you look at the Eastern Conference, and at the time of Game 7, we didn't know what the outcome would be between the Hawks and the Sixers. So you're saying to yourself, well, Philadelphia's on the ropes in a seven-game series against the Hawks. And then even against my own opponent and my adversary in the Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie Irving, gone with a a sprained ankle. James Harden suffered what we later knew to be a grade 2 hamstring strain. But he clearly was a shell of himself, wasn't playing well at all, could barely move, was immobile. And this is the golden opportunity against a shorthanded, undermanned Brooklyn Nets team. You're the Milwaukee Bucks. You do not have a better chance. You you were given an opportunity on a golden platter handed to you. And I talk all the time about how championship teams need to be a bit auspicious, have to be a little bit fortunate, have some fortuitous bounces. You have to have some breaks en route to a championship. And this was it. The Milwaukee Bucks had everything right in front of them. But if they were to lose to this team, not only would Giannis get shredded, not only would Mike Budenholzer lose his job, I think that this was the last chance for the Milwaukee Bucks, this iteration of the of the Milwaukee Bucks with Giannis Antetokounmpo at the forefront and his supporting cast to win an NBA championship. I thought this was the year. Because if you lose this year to the Brooklyn Nets, who are, again, undermanned, next year they're only going to come back stronger, most likely, with better chemistry. So... This is going to be a much more difficult team to beat moving forward. This was the year to pounce on them, to exploit that that mismatch and take advantage of the health situation. And everything was riding on this. This was the bottom of the ninth, two outs, two strikes on Giannis, Budenholzer, and this entire Bucs organization. So if you lose this game Saturday night, 
our legacy, the legacy that we used to sum up Giannis Antetokounmpo and this iteration of the Bucks, we're absolutely killing them today because those are the games that you should be winning. And so the other thing is that outlook would just be so grim moving forward. It would be in so much question, the validity about Giannis, anything that he's been able to accomplish, everything that he's done up until this point would have been in question. And now with this victory, the sea is parted. The Red Sea is parted for him. The Western Conference is vulnerable. The Eastern Conference is now Bucks versus the Atlanta Hawks, and I'll touch on that other game in the Eastern Conference in a second. And it provided everything down the stretch, back and forth, and KD was phenomenal in regulation. I mean, his shot down the stretch of regulation to tie the game with that tough turnaround from basically the three-point line, if not for his foot stepping on the line, to tie the game at 109, if his foot is just literally two inches back behind the three-point line, that's a walk-off game winner, and it caps off what was another historical performance from Kevin Durant with 48 points, scored 49 in the Game 5 win at the Barclays Center. And hitting that just impossibly tough shot over P.J. Tucker would have been a perfect way to put the bow tie on this series. And you would have just chalked it up to Kevin Durant heroics. Kevin Durant just being Kevin Durant closing out this series. And he scored eight final points, the final eight points for the Brooklyn Nets over the 2-11 and 11 stretch in the fourth quarter. He was obviously gassed in the overtime. He was 0 for 6. He couldn't hit anything. He did not get help from, from Joe Harris. James Harden, as I talked about, yes, he scored technically 22 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, but was 5 for 17 from the floor, 2 for 12 from the three-point line. His three-point shooting struggles and woes have continued and persisted in the postseason. Again, he was dealing with that hamstring injury and strain. But this is what I think about with the Brooklyn Nets. And again, we, we were so deprived of a healthy matchup, of a, of a full matchup, that it's such a shame. I still believe that if the Brooklyn Nets were fully healthy, had their full squad, their full platoon of guys, that they would have won this series in six games. But Again, you have to be a bit fortunate. The Milwaukee Bucks were. And I think that this can be potentially a franchise-altering win for the Milwaukee Bucks because this might be a championship. Now they're primed to win a championship. 76ers are gone. Brooklyn Nets are gone. It's just the Atlanta Hawks and the winner between the Phoenix Suns and the Clippers without Kawhi at the moment. And I think if you're Milwaukee... You're saying to yourself, this is the best chance right now that we're going to have. LeBron James is out in the West. This is the best chance we're going to have to win an NBA championship. And the fact that they were able to overcome that hurdle was not only huge psychologically, but I think emotionally there was, a li there was an emotional lift. And that proverbial monkey was finally off the back of Giannis being able to come up big in a game seven on the road. That's the other piece of it. And this is the final takeaway is at the end of the day, you have to win a game seven on the road. And I don't care where the venue is being played. You win a game seven on the road in the NBA playoffs. That is a huge, huge feat. And Giannis and the Bucks should be commended. Because again, at the end of the day, I thought that each one of these matchups, each one of these games was going to come down to the wire and it would be between Kevin Durant and Chris Middleton, who's going to close. And if you're talking about Chris Middleton or Kevin Durant closing at the end of a game, I, I was leaning towards KD, but again, that was under the assumption that he would have his supporting cast. And Giannis, 50 minutes, Middleton, 50 minutes, Durant played 53 minutes. These guys were gassed and ridden all the way 
<clears throat> all the way down to the end. And the bottom line is this, this was a legacy saving and winning win for Giannis. Because if he loses this game, this iteration of the Bucks might be over. Completely, there would be a complete overhaul and complete change going into next season.